Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 200, a 1967 Shelby GT350 in Wimbledon white with Guardsman Blue Le Mans stripes. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a walk around of this car, and we're gonna go for a drive. Let's get started. This is a really exciting milestone for us at Revology Cars. You know, it took us eight years to build the first 100 cars, but only two years to build the next 100 cars. Car number 200 is a 67 Shelby GT350 in the classic Shelby Wimbledon white Guardsman blue color combination. This car looks very original from the outside. Only a few tip-offs that you're not looking at an original Shelby. The hood latches are different. LED lighting, although it looks like the old seal beam headlamps, but once they're lit at night, very obvious that you're not looking at an old seal beam headlamp. The 10 spoke Shelby wheels, of course, these are 17 inch versus the original 15 inch. Our car is equipped with the passenger side rear view mirror, which obviously the original didn't have. The polyurethane sealed glass, obviously the original didn't have. So those little details, little things that we do for functionality and to improve safety, but really don't detract from the original appearance. At the rear of the car, LED tail lamps with sequential turn signals, the GT350 badging as the original had it on the deck lid spoiler and on the fuel cap. Really the only tip off back here that you're looking at an original Shelby is the larger exhaust tips, which are necessary because we have a larger exhaust system. The interior of this car is equipped with our optional Napa leather. It's a Porsche Napa leather. This car also has the blue contrast stitching to match the Le Mans stripes. It has the walnut interior veneer. The standard for 67 Deluxe interior was the aluminum, but we also offer the walnut option, so that's what the client selected. We chose the seat without the optional headrest, kind of more the original style seat. And for a couple of customers who've requested it, we've gotten a uh, Carroll Shelby signature on the dash or glove box door. Depending on the model year, it's a service that they offer. I haven't seen how they do it. They say that they have a machine that reproduces Carroll's Signature, I just envision they send a bunch of glove box doors off to the local penitentiary to get one of the guys that are in there for forgery, but maybe not. Maybe it's actually a machine, I don't know. Nice interior with little touches that kind of make it a bit unique and distinctive. Let's go for a ride. Okay, so we're driving car 200, 67 Shelby GT350. This car is equipped with the naturally aspirated Gen 3 Coyote, 460 horsepower, backed by the 10R80 10-speed automatic transmission. This is a 2023 Mustang GT spec powertrain, exactly the same that was delivered to the factory and installed in Mustang GTs in 2023 and behaves just like a factory powertrain. Very smooth, lots of power, and of course, reliable. I had the opportunity recently to drive the 2024 Mustang GT, the S650, which was um, was interesting. I haven't actually driven the S550 in a long time. It's been several years. And I remember when I first drove it, I was really impressed by how refined the car had become. And S650 is no different. It is quite refined. In fact, wind noise is almost non-existent. That car is so silent on the highway, really impressive, like a luxury car. Whoever was responsible for wind noise on S650 did a fantastic job, overachieved, definitely. But you know, I can't help thinking that I wish Ford would do more with the S650 platform. I mean, it's such a nice platform. It has so much potential. You know, there's such a small market for two-door cars nowadays even with the name Mustang on them, you know, that's probably the best thing you can do for a car is have an iconic nameplate like that attached to it. But even so, there's just not that much demand for a two-door car in 2024. Why can't they do a four-door? Why can't they do a crossover? I mean, wouldn't that be cool? 
a Mustang crossover with a V8 engine, a six-speed transmission, I would be interested in that. I can't really use a modern two-door that I really don't have utility of a back seat. And I think a lot of other people feel the same way. You know, it's nice that Ford is getting back into racing with the Mustang, but let's face it, that's really not relevant to most people. They're just not gonna know about it. They're not gonna care about it. The volume associated with race cars is teeny tiny. But Ford's, you know, it's a volume company. They're in the volume business. They need to be thinking about how do we get more volume? We've got this investment, sunk cost. We've got this platform. What can we do with it? You know, we do a Ford or do a crossover. We can do other things and drive some volume. They need some volume. All these EVs that they thought were going to materialize haven't. Not all their fault. Everybody was following that herd, you know? So that's a lot of lost volume. Let's go somewhere that we know, right? To me, it just seems like such a no brainer. Four door Mustang, crossover Mustang. And while I'm talking about what Ford should do with the Mustang, it's like, I know, like millions of people love to tell Ford what they need to do with the Mustang. I get it. But don't be so rigid as far as the styling cues. It doesn't need to bring back all of these elements of the 1960s car. It just needs to have character. It needs to be handsome, it needs to be affordable, it needs to be sporty. But it doesn't have to mimic the specific design elements. It's really not necessary. You can capture the theme, the character of the car without copying the design element. I mean, that was what it was, and it, it created the icon. But it could be something else. It can evolve. It can evolve like ZZ Top. Look at ZZ Top, how they evolved. They stayed current. They were like a Texas blues band, and then they kind of went like almost disco and <laughs> Rod Stewart's another guy who really evolved a lot. And then some people never evolved, like ACDC. And I saw ACDC in 2013 and everybody just wanted to hear Back in Black. If that's what you got to do every night, you just got to go there for 40 years and play the same song over and over. It seems like that would get to be a drag. The point is you got to reinvent yourself and don't get hung up by, you know, the hardware. Think more about the image and execute a modern interpretation of that image, something that's relevant to people today. So anyway, that's my two cents. As usual, you get that for free when you tune in to Robology Cars video. <laughs>